November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. Did you know that everything you do in the air is made up of just four things? Straight and level flight, climbs, turns, and descents. I suppose we could simplify it to three things if you just said straight and level, direction, or altitude changes. Of course, I guess we could do two if we just said straight and level or not. But the first thing to master, of course, is straight and level flight. That might sound easy, but when you're just starting out, it can be difficult. You'll be spending most of your pilot life in straight and level flight anyway, because most of your flights are spent in cruise, which is straight and level most of the time. <laughs> of course, you make turns at waypoints. But what's going on in straight and level flight? Well, first off, straight means you're not turning, and level means you're not changing altitude. But it also might refer to your role. If you're straight and level, you're not turning or changing altitude, and your wings are horizontal. But what does this mean dynamically? Well, it means that your lift equals your weight. It has to, right? If your altitude is changing, then you have either more or less lift than the weight of the plane. To keep your airplane on an altitude, your lift must equal your weight. Now, how do you maintain this condition? Well, in cruise, you'll do it with elevator and throttle. You'll add throttle and make, to make large altitude changes, but you'll make minor adjustments with the elevator or its trim wheel. The airplane will maintain its altitude on its own with given a proper power and trim setting. You can basically fly hands off for a while. But how do you know you're flying straight and level though? Well, you check your instruments. The primary instrument for pitch is your altimeter. The primary pitch instrument is your altimeter. The altimeter is your primary pitch instrument. That might be on a test. If your altitude is changing, you're not level, so fix it. Your artificial horizon, vertical speed indicator, and airspeed indicator can also be used to determine your pitch. Check out my instrument mastery series for more on each of those. Okay, so you use your altimeter to tell if you're flying at a constant altitude, but how do you know if you're flying straight, as in not turning? You look at your compass or directional gyro. If the numbers are moving, you're turning. You can also use your turn coordinator to discern if you're turning. If you're, not in, if you're in coordinated flight and one of your wings is lower than the other, odds are you're turning. I mentioned in a previous video that banking is what turns the aircraft, right? Not the rudder. The rudder is used to control yaw, not turn the plane. I know, weird if you're a boater. To fly straight, you level your wings and center your rudder. It's that simple. If your wings are level, you're probably not turning. Banking the airplane is what turns you, right? And if you're not banked, you're likely not turning. You can turn with the rudder and level wings, but you'd be skidding and not in coordinated flight. It's not typical, but just be aware of that possibility. When you turn, you bank and apply rudder to keep the ball centered. As you bank, your lift is still perpendicular to the wings, but you need the vertical component of your lift to still equal the weight of your plane to maintain altitude, right? So you typically have to pull back on the stick to increase your lift. You're basically climbing in a circle. The sideways component of your lift is what does the turning. The more you bank, the more lift you need to maintain altitude because your lift vector is now pointed farther from vertical. So that's what's going on in a turn. Some portion of your lift is pointed off of vertical and you turn, unless you intentionally slip, but we'll talk about that later. Now, for small turns, we don't need to change the power, but if we're gonna make large heading changes or apply lots of bank, then we need to bump up the throttle. To master turns, you need to focus on our altitude and maintaining coordinated flight. Some planes require more rudder than others, uh, and some require less, of course. It all depends on which direction you turn because of propeller slipstream effects. Remember to step on the ball during turns. Step on the ball. Check out my instrument mastery series for more on the turn coordinators. Climbing or descending is simple, right? Add power to climb, step on the right rudder to compensate for P-factor, and to maintain your heading. Release the right pedal pressure as you begin to level off out at your new altitude. If you're descending, you pull the power back and you work the pedals to maintain coordinated flight and heading. Climbs and descents are not terribly difficult, but doing them precisely takes a bit of practice. I mentioned in my instrument mastery series that you should start to level off at an altitude that's about, oh, 10% of your vertical speed before your target altitude, right? So if your climb rate's 1,000 feet a minute, then you start to level off 100 feet before your target altitude. That keeps passengers from puking. If climbing, level off and let your speed build back up before pulling the power back, 
don't pull power back while you're still in the climb. That's about all there is to climbs and descents. I believe turns are the most difficult of the flight maneuvers to master because maintaining level flight is accomplished, well, it's by means I mentioned before, but turns require the correct application of rudder and power. Another thing for my instrument mastery is when you roll out of a turn. If you wait to start rolling out until you're already on your assigned heading, well, you're going to overshoot, or at least, you know, stress your plane and its passengers a little bit. So you're going to start to roll out at half your bank angle, right? So if you're banked at 20 degrees, you're going to start to roll your wings level when your heading indicator is 10 degrees before your assigned heading, right? If you're doing steep turns at 60 degrees, then you'll start rolling out 30 degrees before your assigned heading. Steep turns are fun. Roll out at half your bank angle and level off at 10% of your vertical speed. Roll out at half your bank angle and level off at 10% of your vertical speed. That may be on a test. In summary, it's the horizontal component of lift that does the turning, not the rudder. Rudder is used to control yaw, which is the rotation about your vertical axis. The rudder's function will be on a test. You climb if your lift exceeds your weight, and you descend if the reverse is true. Straight and level means you're not turning or changing altitude. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That'll certainly help me out, as we'll leave in a bunch of comments and engaging in lively discussions down below. Hey, what about those shirts? Have you checked out my six-pack? And thanks for staying with me on 121 Point Mike.